Hello nurses, this is Kevin with Nursing Camp and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. This is my cardiac lecture number 20, uh, CAD, atherosclerosis, to pave the way to an MI. From this sticky note, which can be found on Nursing Camp, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, Etsy, and Twitter. Alright, let's get into it. To pave the way for to an MI. What are these? What is to pave the way? Well, to pave the way is problems that would cause an MI. And the first thing is tissue, tissue damage. And tissue damage could be either in the form of structural damage, as far as like a hypertrophy heart, where the, the heart vessel is on um, the tissue is so large, or dilated cardiomyopathy, where the tissue is a very, very thin, floppy heart. The next is there's a problem outside the heart, and that could either be a tamponade or a trauma. The other one is uh, a pumping problem, and that is because of this heart, can't quite pump. And the other one is um, arteries, and that's what we're talking about today, is arteries. Those are the vessels outside the heart, and those vessels are the problem. So whenever we're looking for uh, cardiovascular disease, we're thinking about where is the problem, and CAD is all about these vessels. Cardiovascular, or CAD. Now, CAD is coronary artery disease. It's a blanket term, and what it means that is that there's actual atherosclerosis and arteriosclerosis below CAD. So when you see a test question that says patients admitted with coronary artery disease, the first question is what kind? Or if a person is saying, um, because if they don't say which kind it is, it's a generic question on coronary artery disease based on modifiable factors or non-modifiable factors, diet and other principles. Um, the next thing is valves. So in a previous lecture, I talked about the valves. Um, try pulling my aorta, you know, tricuspid pulmonic mitral aorta. Um, there's a problem actually in the valve. Either it's a regurg or a stenosis or something like that. And then the last thing is um, electricity. And that's a problem with the actual electrical problem, whether it's AFib or it's a flutter or VTAC or sinus break or something like that. There's something wrong with the electricity. So whenever you're thinking about a heart question, it's usually focused on to pave the way. One of these reasons will result in an MI or could result in an MI. And today we're talking about the A. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, atheros um, arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis. Well, arteriosclerosis is um, the stretch, arterial stretch, where atherosclerosis is at the wall. At the wall, and that's what we're talking about. So what wall are we talking about? Well, in the coronary arteries, there's coronary arteries that go and feed the heart with oxygen. And what we're looking at is this little section here. Well, um, because of those other reasons that could cause um, coronary artery disease like uh, hypertension, uh, diabetes, uh, smoking, these are all things that can cause vessel damage. And those vessels actually start to get these little striations and some damage to that. Well, the liver makes LDLs, which is a cholesterol, and they go around and they circulate in the body. Okay, and they do repairs and different things like that. Well, the issue is, is that sometimes these LDLs are pretty sticky. And then they bind to the sides of these arteries. Okay. Well, HDL, which is the good cholesterol, is... Um, which we want generally high, is going to go around and clean off these arteries, okay, so that they don't bind to the sides. Um, so that's why we want HDLs high. So we want LDLs to be low. Another one that is a helper that tries to help I call triglycerides. And triglycerides also stick to the walls, okay. Well, the problem with this is, is that this is sticky. And once it starts to stay there for a period of time, that's why we say exercise. If you exercise fast, you get increased blood flow and the stickiness won't stick to the sides of the wall. That's basically what kind of what happens. Or if you change your diet, which decreases LDLs and 
you know, triglycerides. It's a low fat diet and everything. But what happens is, is that if they do not make those lifestyle changes, that cholesterol starts to bind up. And that's the problem at the wall. And what happens is, is that the first sign is, is that they start to get calcium deposits. And calcium is generally hard. And calcium, once it starts to bind to the sides of the arteries, um, that's the first step of coronary artery disease, paving the way to the MI. How do you find out there's a calcium study? Well, they go to a, a CAT scan and they put the person into a CAT scan and they, it's a non-invasive test and they're looking to look for calcium deposits. If it's positive, they're on the first steps of coronary artery disease, okay? So sometimes the first signs and symptoms are um, calcium study or labs like high cholesterol or LDLs, low cholesterol, um, or triglycerides. So generally we don't put that person right on medications mm -hmm. first. The next thing is, is that um, what happens next? Well, they're basically asymptomatic um, from this until they might have an MI. And the first signs and symptoms are generally shortness of breath, tired a lot, because the perfusion can't get to the coronary arteries. This can happen also in the uh, carotids. So it can also happen in the heart and in the carotids up here. And those plaques can form there and they get what's called a narrowing or a stenosis. Okay, so atherosclerosis is at the wall. And then um, arteriosclerosis will be the next lecture in lecture 21. But let's go through our A sleeps to evaluate um, uh, atherosclerosis. So the first thing is atherosclerosis acute or chronic? Well, it's chronic because of um, we see the boat coming. The boat in the form of um, problems um, like cholesterol screenings or shortness of breath or tired. If we see chest pain, they're already at that problem stage. So it's a chronic condition until it becomes acute. So they need a lot of higher Maslow teaching. How does it start? Well, we just talked about coronary Arteries get um, cholesterol buildup in the arteries. Uh, first sign is calcium deposits. Then it becomes um, uh, problematic where uh, the calcium gets hard, and next thing you know, uh, atherosclerosis. So that's a cause problem. Um, labs. Some um, labs to look at is um, triglycerides. Triglycerides should be uh, um, 200. Uh, total cholesterol is up here, sorry. Uh, that should be less than 200. I'll talk about that more in lecture number 22, where I talk about uh, cholesterol screening. Um, other labs is uh, calcium study, calcium plus, um, and looking at uh, fats. Eating, so they're going to be on a low fat diet, low saturated fats, um, low cholesterol, um, basically to limit the amount of um, cholesterol circulatory. Sometimes you have a family history, so choose your parents wisely. And then um, your assessment. The assessment is pretty much short of breath. Um, chest pain is too late. That makes it the acute, um, tired a lot. Um, but generally, they're asymptomatic until there becomes a problem. That's why we do a calcium study. Uh, prescriptions. Generally, they're not started right on prescriptions. Um, they're started on diet principles first, unless there's a significant history. Then they might be starting Provacol or statins um, to decrease the amount of um, cholesterol. And statins always you evaluate uh, liver enzymes with statins. Uh, problems or procedures? Well, if the patient has an MI, they might have chest pain, and that's a problem. Uh, but generally, there's no problems or procedures. Generally, we'll do a calcium study to evaluate. If it is a problem, like an MI or chest pain, um, they're going to go for a cabbage for the procedure to look at the vessels. And that's in another lecture. So what stands out? Well, atherosclerosis is a problem on the wall. It's actually on the wall that is causing the problem, and the cholesterol is building up on the wall. And what happens is, is sometimes those plaques can rupture, or they can clot, and they can actually um, uh, harden areas where a clot can actually start to a plaque can bind there and next thing you know in the coronary arteries um, they get blocked and everything down here 
um, is an MI because they're not getting oxygen. That's a problem. Well, that's about it. My name is Camp from Nursing Camp. Um, that just covers a basic overview of atherosclerosis. And I can be found on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, and nursingcamp.com. That's it. Nurse on, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.